Hey everyone, so in this section we're talking about subject areas or fields of study that you can actually pursue at the Harvard Extension School. Now we actually did two previous segments on the Extension School and if you haven't checked them out, I definitely recommend that you do so. I'll actually link them in the description below so you can kind of get a general overview of what the Extension School is, whether or not it's something that's right for you, and just some things that you should actually keep in mind if you're considering studying there in the future. However, in this particular segment we're going to talk specifically about some fields of study that you can actually pursue at the Extension School at both of the bachelor's and master's level. Now if you remember from the previous segment we talked about the fact that the Extension School offers the Bachelor of Liberal Arts in Extension Studies with a specialization in a particular field of study and then of course the Master of Liberal Arts in Extension Studies with a particular specialization in a field of study as well. Now because of the title of these two degrees many people assume that getting a degree from the Extension school is going to be based largely on a liberal arts education. Now while you are able to pursue many of the traditional liberal arts fields of studies, what you'll probably find now is that you are, you are also able to pursue some subject areas that traditionally fall outside of the liberal arts field and in some cases subject areas that are entirely outside of the liberal arts realm and in some cases are, are strong like STEM based majors. And I'll give you a couple examples for you to consider here. At the undergraduate level, there is the ability to specialize in computer science, biology, mathematics, business administration and management, which in my opinion is a huge deal because of course Harvard College doesn't actually offer business administration and management as an undergraduate major. In fact, a lot of students will go to auxiliary majors where they can get a lot of the similar skills or go to economics as an example. Uh, and of course, you do have Harvard Business School, which will offer uh, business administration at the master's level. And so being able to pursue a business administration administration as a major at the undergraduate level through the extension school, something that's entirely revolutionary in, in that sense. And at the graduate level, you can pursue things like finance management, software engineering, data science, information management system, biotechnology, bioengineering and nanotechnology, and of course you do have the more traditional liberal arts based majors as well. Um, things like English, journalism, history, psychology, religion. Uh, there's a variety of other ones for you to consider there as well. Of course, these specializations, in a lot of cases, people don't necessarily uh, associate with the liberal arts, uh, particularly the ones that were STEM based that we talked about. And so for that reason, if you're interested in studying software engineering, a lot of people won't even look at the extension school because they just associate it with the Bachelor of Liberal Arts and Master of Liberal Arts and Extension Studies and kind of assume that it isn't going to be relative to them at all. In fact, a lot of people might look at the extension school for individual courses to supplement their existing education or maybe even a diploma program or a specific uh, certificate program that's uh, related to this field of study that they're interested in. Um, however, it's very important to note that there are some opportunities at the undergraduate and graduate level as well. Now the benefits at looking at some of these programs is not necessarily the fact that you're going to be getting a world-class education at an institution that's uh, regarded as one of the most, if not the most prestigious university in the world. Um, you're also going to have a lot of the other benefits such as being able to be part of the Harvard Alumni Association, to be able to build those connections with people within your class, but also pre previous and prior graduates uh, of the program or of the Extension School in general. This might offer you some uh, tremendous benefits in terms of building out your network that way, but also if you were to look at the actual curriculums that are being designed around some of these majors, what you'll find is that it's very comparable to what you would expect at some other institutions offering these same uh, specializations or majors as well. And so for that reason, you're actually getting a very rigorous education. Now, of course, you're, there might be a, a slight educational process with employers when you graduate. As an example, if your specialization is in software engineering, it might be a little bit interesting for an employer to see Master of Liberal Arts and Extension Studies with a specialization in software engineering. You don't necessarily associate software engineering with a liberal arts degree. And so there might be that educational process, particularly if they're not familiar with the Extension School as well. But the benefits that you're getting out of some of these programs um, in the types of courses that are being offered and really the fact that especially if you're going to be taking some of these on campus courses through the summer school, you might have the ability to take some of these 
courses uh, with some of the other students in the other degree granting colleges within Harvard University kind of build out your network that way but it also is a testament to the high quality education that you're going to be getting as well of course there's going to be some flexibility naturally with some of these programs as well and so in some cases you might only have to take a few courses on campus three or four in some cases but there are some specializations that require fewer courses uh, on campus as well too so that might be something that is of interest to you particularly if you're already working in the field and you have some other personal and professional commitments that are going to prohibit you from actually relocating to Cambridge for a short period of time but it's also a really good opportunity for you to uh, still be able to apply a lot of the knowledge that you're learning in real time now on the flip side of this if you are still interested in the liberal arts as well too I also still think that this is an awesome opportunity for you because of the fact that there a is some flexibility but B the fact that when you look at the education that you're actually getting from the institution that you're getting it from uh, it's actually priced fairly um, well in my opinion um, I, I of course it's not cheap by any means but the fact that you can actually amortize this over a number of years while you're actually completing the program maybe on a part-time basis and if you're working full-time as well uh, it might actually reduce the cost quite a bit and in some cases might even be cheaper than if you were to stop working for a period of time and to actually go back to university for a set a number of years in some cases uh, pay the tuition the living expenses associated with that and have the lost wages in that period of time as well. I think that this is a great opportunity for people who are pursuing these fields for, for uh, intellectual curiosity or stimulation and not necessarily because uh, it's going to necessarily provide them with a whole lot of direct career benefits. And so for that reason, the return on investment there might not be as uh, a dramatic or uh, might not be as much of a prohibiting factor for people to pursue some non-traditional fields that aren't necessarily correlated with their particular career trajectory. So for that reason, again, uh, the Extension School does provide a lot of great benefits uh, and I love the fact that they're kind of opening up the offerings beyond the traditional liberal arts fields of studies now that does make me question whether or not in the future the title of the degrees are actually going to change to reflect the new majors this will be particularly interesting if a lot of the fields of study that are going to be offered uh, are going to be more so in the STEM realm, and in some cases, uh, if they can even outnumber some of the liberal arts offerings as well, it'd be interesting to see whether or not the actual name of the degree is actually going to change with that as well. But again, this is something that's still very much in the early stages. It'll be interesting to see how this progresses over time. So hopefully this provided you with a great general overview of things that you should consider, some subject areas that you might not have known exist otherwise. I'd love to hear your comments, questions, and concerns in the comment section below. Did you know that they offer some of these specializations? Are you actually a student there? Do you know anyone else who is? Uh, I'd love to hear your uh, feedback as well. If you appreciated this, make sure to subscribe and make sure to like. As always, thank you so much again for listening, and we'll see you in the next one.